of Mark, chapter 16, beginning at the first verse. <coughs> and when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salam, brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolling back. And as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side. And they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place where they laid him. <laughs> But go and tell the disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he has told you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Good morning, friends. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. We gather together today to celebrate the most amazing miracle that happened more than 2,000 years ago, and it's still reverberating around the world today. He is risen, my friends. He is risen indeed. Jesus is alive. But the question for all of us is, are you? 
<laughs> Jesus is alive, my friends. He's absolutely alive. Are we alive? Now we know the story. The women are given an important task to tell the disciples what had happened. The women were messengers of this great truth that Jesus is alive. And this is a great privilege and an incredible responsibility. But the job of telling others this great news is now ours. Are you doing it? Are you telling others that Jesus is alive? Are you showing others the way you live your life, through the way you live your life, following the example of Christ that Jesus is alive? Today's easy, easy, isn't it? It's Easter Sunday. We can tell everyone that Jesus is alive today. But are we telling <laughs> everyone that Jesus is alive through our lives every single day? Friends, when we see the place where they laid him is now empty, we see that God did not forsake Jesus. When we see the place where they laid him is now empty, we see that death is conquered. When we see the place where they laid him is now empty, we have a living friend in Jesus Christ. Are we telling others that the tomb is empty? The three women had an idea of what to expect early that <laughs> Sunday morning, but what they experienced was another matter altogether. Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Salome, the three women whom Mark said witnessed Jesus' crucifixion were on their way to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body. And even though Jesus had already been anointed at Bethany, these three women wanted to do one last act of devotion and love to Jesus. They wanted one last opportunity to care for the man who had cared for them and his followers. It's this loving act that these three women came to Jesus' tomb to perform. And now keep in mind, on Friday, three days by the Jewish way of keeping time, they witnessed Jesus' betrayal, his violent and brutal death on a cross, and we can excuse the fact that, that the prophecies about Jesus' death were the furthest thing from their minds. These were words that Jesus spoke. He said on the third day he would be resurrected. And for the women, this was the furthest thing from their mind. They were focused on the obstacle of what was ahead of them. How would they be able to roll away the heavy stone that was placed in front of Jesus' tomb? They were in mourning and perhaps doubted what Jesus said about his resurrection would happen. What they knew was this. Their master, their friend, their teacher, and their Lord was dead. On this first day after the Sabbath, these women wanted to care for him in the only way they knew how, by giving of themselves. Now you can imagine their surprise when they arrived at the tomb, the same tomb Joseph of Arimathea had used to bury Jesus on Friday, and they saw that the, to the stone had been rolled away. It's not what they expected to see. They expected things to be as they were on Friday, but what they witnessed on Sunday morning was the furthest thing from their expectations. They didn't expect to see an empty tomb. They expected to see Jesus in his burial cloths, and yet Jesus was not there. The three women were still focused on Friday, and when they saw the empty tomb, it wasn't an immediate confirmation that Jesus is risen from the dead. Their first reaction was one of fear. Where did they take Jesus? They assumed that someone had come to the tomb and taken Jesus' body overnight. And it wasn't until they saw the angel they realized the reality of Friday afternoon had been eclipsed by the new reality of a Sunday morning. The messenger stood before the women and proclaimed, He is not here. He is risen. Sunday has come. A new reality has taken place and Jesus is resurrected. Jesus is alive. And the prophecy of his death and resurrection was true. Jesus' life has been resurrected. And as followers of Christ, my friends, has your life been resurrected? These three loving, giving, compassionate women who had decided to set out to care for Jesus would be the first to learn the most important news ever delivered in human history. They were the first to realize that Friday was not the end of the story. Sunday is the new beginning. Our story doesn't end at the cross, but it begins with Jesus' resurrection. This is not a resuscitation of life. It's much deeper. On that Easter day, Jesus' resurrection secured victory <laughs> over human sin and death itself. And as we gather for our Easter celebration today to recall this 2,000-year-old miracle, it's because Jesus is alive that we celebrate today. Jesus is alive, my friends. Are you? Betrayal couldn't keep Jesus from fulfilling God's mission for him. Death couldn't prevent Jesus from being the Messiah who redeemed humanity and established the kingdom of God. Hope is alive, and Jesus is alive. Are you alive? Easter is important, and the resurrection is crucial. Without the resurrection, there is no hope. There's no potential for faith. 
there would have been no power and life-changing meaning behind Jesus' words. Without the resurrection, there'd be no reason for us to be here today or any day. Jesus' teaching in life would have been simply inspirational ideas on how to live a better life and be void of power and hope. And even more, Jesus' death would have been in vain. But friends, the tomb is empty. Jesus is not here. He is risen. Sunday morning came and Jesus is alive. Are you? It was a new reality that came on that Sunday morning. We cannot remain people of Friday afternoon who cry out, They killed my Lord. We are a people who shout with loud hallelujahs, My Savior lives. And what does this mean for us? It means we have forgiveness for our sins, healing for our sickness, joy instead of pain and sorrow, peace instead of anxiety, his friendship instead of loneliness, his light for our darkness, and eternal life from his death. Jesus is alive. Are you? And friends, if you proclaim that Jesus, your Savior, is alive, then you had better live also. You had better live your life sharing the good news with all of God's people, living in hope for tomorrow and loving and serving others, all others, the way Jesus did in Jesus' name. Jesus is alive. Are you? Are you alive in Christ and allowing Christ to live in you and through you and maybe even in spite of you? Jesus came to give us life, and are you living or just existing? Jesus is alive. Are you? Jesus is risen as a powerful new reality, and by this very act, all who would believe that Jesus lives and secure the forgiveness of sin is given the greatest gift through faith of a relationship with God through the Holy Spirit. Jesus is alive. Are you? You're allowed to respond to that. <laughs> a new hope came on Sunday morning. It is a hope that is still powerful and beautiful, a hope that is still relevant in a world that believes that faith is not something worth having. We know that's not the case because our Savior lives. Today we are not a people of Friday, and just like the three women who were the first to witness the tomb being empty, we are a people of Sunday morning. We worship in anticipation that something happened on that day, something beautiful and powerful, and it is as life-changing today as it was then. Jesus came to give us life that we could have life and enjoy life and have it in abundance until it overflows. Are you living that way? Are you enjoying life and recognizing the abundance of life, love, and joy that Jesus brings to the world and to you? Are you feeding the hungry like Jesus did? Are you loving God and all of your neighbors and yourself like Jesus did? Are you helping and serving and giving of yourself and following the example of Christ? Are you living the way Jesus calls you to live as his disciples? Jesus is alive, my friends. Are you? Yeah. 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 Let us shout with loud hallelujahs that Sunday came, the tomb is empty, Jesus was not found, he is risen, he is risen indeed. Glory be to God, Jesus is alive, and I pray that you are too. Amen. 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 <coughs> These are a symbol of compressed time. We use this so that other things can happen for us. It compresses our life and it's our time. It's merely a symbol. And as a symbol, it could be many things. It could be an icon or it could be an idol. An icon is something we look at to see a greater truth. An idol is something we worship. I'm hoping you can see this as an icon today, a symbol of your life, because this will give life to those who are having a hard time. This will give life to the pantry, to people who are hungry. This will give life in the name of a risen Savior who came to give us life. What was the question? Jesus is alive, are, are you? you? Yes. 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 Put up or shut up. <laughs> As we share our gifts, we will sing together.
join me in our prayer. O oh God, with our faces touched by the light of a new day and hearts warmed by our prayers and praises, we come before you to pray for the needs of our world. Into the light of Easter morning, we raise those who are struggling with illness, with despair over their lives, or the breakdown of relationships. May the light of Christ shine upon them. May the light of Christ shine upon them. And through the light of Easter morning, we bring those places in our world where violence and poverty, need and hopelessness are the experiences of everyday life. May the light of Christ shine upon them. May the light of Christ shine upon them. And to the light of Easter morning, we bring the hurt of Ukraine and Gaza and Baltimore. We hold in our hearts these hurting places and others and those who are suffering violence and bereavement <laughs> or conflict, may the light of Christ shine upon them. May the light of Christ shine upon them. And into the light of Easter morning, we bring ourselves the private struggles, the heart's yearnings, the hidden dreams, the unfulfilled potential. May the light of Christ shine upon us. May the light of Christ shine upon us. Risen Christ, we greet you and we pray with joy and confidence as you taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. <coughs> Amen. Christ is risen. Are we? Yes. yes. Dance, celebrate, sing, and shout for joy. Christ is risen. He goes before us into this world of fear and pain. He has called us to bring the good news of redemption, of healing and hope. Go in peace. The presence of the risen Lord is with you now and forever. Amen. 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 The church has invited us in for refreshments after the service.